Hey, Chopping Your Life's Math Industry, and we are going to take a look at basic algebra. So, it's actually summer vacation right now, June of 2024. Every year, we usually do a routine of going back to the basics for the next few days, because to avoid the summer slide, we believe that basic algebra is the fundamental skills needed to advance your learning further, but also to those who are in Algebra 2, Statistics, Pre-Calculus, Calculus, and more subjects. So even though this might be going back to like late middle school, early high school, it's a good idea to understand the basics because a robot needs the bases before anything else is added. It's the base X. <laughs> so going back to algebra, what it tends to do is it helps us understand math a bit more easier. For example, you might have had these problems in elementary school where the teachers would ask you to say, hey, what does this problem equal to? Like, what is 18 plus 20 equal to? Yeah. <laughs> we say it can equal to 38. And there are other problems where the teachers will ask us to find some kind of missing number in the middle. Turns out we can say 54 subtracted by what mystery number can get us to 12? Yeah. We could say 54 minus 42 equals 12. So yeah, that's pretty much the basic math that we have learned in elementary school. But what happens in middle school? Sometimes in middle school, they require you to complete and solve more complicated problems. In terms of if a mathematician already solved the problem, but made a made an error where he probably spilled ketchup over a number or an operator that was missing, how would you find the missing number? So we have some questions right over here, which are a bit more middle school and early high school. So here's an example. Instead of having a question mark as a missing number, mathematicians and math people love to use the letter X. The letter X is one of the fundamental symbols that people use in algebra to denote M, describe some kind of missing random number. The X represents the unknown, and we're trying to find the unknown. So we have X plus 7 equals 10. Think of it this way. Assuming the problem is already solved out, what number plus 7 equals 10 because there's an equal sign? What we have to do is try to reverse the problem and say, if the problem is solved, how can I find the missing number by doing the opposite of what the problem intentionally said? <laughs> So what we have to do is, since we have an x plus 7 equals 10, that 7 has to go to the other side because we want to have a variable on one side and a number on the other side. So minus 7, minus 7, and we could say that x is going to equal 3 because 10 minus 7 is 3. And in this case scenario, x equals 3, if you put 3 in for x, 3 plus 7 equals 10. So that's what happens, and that's how algebra works. Algebra is one of the fundamental things that we learn in mathematics because it's really good if you want to solve the unknown or if you want to prove any theorem or problem, which is going to help you if you want to understand more complex equations. Not only you solve the problem, 
but you can go back and find what the missing information is. Let's take a look at some of the other problems. So we have 5x plus 10 equals 110. So what we have to do is try to get the x alone. So we can, since we have an add by 10, we can subtract by 10 and subtract this by 10. So 110 minus 10 is going to be 100. And since we have a 5x and a 100, it's going to be converted into 5x equals 100. But the problem is, how are we going to get to the x? Because what is 5x in the first place? Well, if you have a number before a, a number before an x or a variable, which an x is called, is called the coefficient. Meaning, if I were to put a number in for x, then the coefficient would tell that variable, multiply yourselves by the coefficient. So if I were to say, if I put 3x and I put 7 in front of the x, then it's going to be 3 times 7 equals 21. Or if I were to put right over here 5x and put 4, then I would say 5 times 4 is 20. So right over here, 5 multiplied by what kind of number gives us to 100? Hmm. If we multiply, if the problem is multiplying, and we want to find the missing data, we have to reverse the problem. So we divide. So we are going to divide by 5 and divide by 5 on both sides. So these cancel out. And 100 divided by 5 is 20. So x equals 20. If you put 20 in for x, 5 times 20 is 100. So that is how we can double check our answer. Let's try one more problem. 6x plus 12 equals negative 36. We can subtract by the 12 and subtract by the 12. And we are going to get negative 48. And we have 6x equals negative 48. Divide by 6 and divide by 6. And we can say negative 48 divided by 6 is going to be equal to 8. But it's actually x equals negative 8. Why negative 8? Because a negative, a negative divided by a positive is going to be a negative. If it was a negative divided by a negative, it's going to be a positive. It's just like multiplication or division or both. If you multiply or divide with negative numbers, Remember, negative times or divide by a positive is a negative. And negative times or divide by a negative is a positive. So that is going to be the basic skills needed to advance your learning further and to avoid the summer slide. I hope this video has helped you understand basic algebra. Thank you for watching Topping Your Life's Math Industry. Like and subscribe.